today, April 1st, 2022, been 20 years that I've been in the newspaper business. So I've been saying I've been doing this for 20 years, for a couple years now, but now it's actually official. I walked into the Mount Pleasant News, I'm assuming it was a Monday, April 1st, 2002, and started my job as the Lifestyles Editor. And they told me at the time that that was a position normally relegated to women. And I don't think they could get away with saying that these days. But that's how it was 20 years ago. Anyway, I thought in this video I'd kind of take a look back at some of the uh, highlights and lowlights of the job. At basically the halfway point of my newspaper career here, even though lately I've been kind of thinking, I don't know how much longer I can do this. A former editor of mine at uh, the Time Citizen in Iowa Falls has a friend that does embroidery signs. And uh, I think it said something like, uh, it's an immense pressure with pretty crappy pay, but on the other hand, everybody hates you. And uh, that's that's been pretty pretty true as a journalist, I'd say, over the years. But uh, let's uh, take a look back at some of the memories from the Mount Pleasant News if my cat will stop making a bunch of noise. But I know she won't. Uh, one of the best things I remember from the Mount Pleasant News is um, the editor was gone one time and I filled in for him. I wrote a column and it was about those uh, disgusting Halloween candies and the black and orange wrappers, the cheapest candy you can come up with that uh, me and my sisters always called peanut butter yuckies as a kid. Some bitter old woman wrote me a letter about it. She took the time to write me a letter about this. But you'd be amazed at the number of people who actually do this, saying that uh, she liked those candies. They're called peanut butter kisses, by the way. And not everyone can buy Snickers and whatnot for people to give out. And uh, she claimed I probably made 10 times what she did on her social security. Well, I was making probably eight fifty an hour at the time, so I kind of doubt her claim that I was making more than her. But anyway, it's 20 years later now, and just the other day, my uncle uh, tagged me on something on Facebook about uh, trick-or-treating and Halloween, and he asked, peanut butter yuckies? So <laughs> definitely people remember that story, so it's always a good one to tell. And uh, so after that... Uh, I became the editor up there and a couple more columns like that. Not really uh, complaints or anything from people about it, but uh, the publisher said maybe I should do something more substantial uh, with some little more substance and not just my pet peeve of the week. So I wrote a column about um, something I didn't think that George W. Bush was doing right. He was president at the time, of course. And some lady calls him and cancels her subscription to the newspaper because of my column. So, you know, that's how the business goes, folks. No matter how you try over here, over there, someone doesn't like it. So, I don't know. I guess another time, something similar to that at the Mount Pleasant News. I did a story about the sheriff's son getting busted for drugs, and that seems like a story, right? I mean, the sheriff's son getting busted for drugs. And uh, the Burlington Hawkeye, one of the oldest papers in the state here in Iowa, also did a story because we were pretty close. The two towns are pretty close. The Hawkeye is the big regional paper at the time. Now they've been totally gutted by Gatehouse or whatever it is. But anyway, they were big competitors then. And this guy... Uh, this ass clown calls in and he's like, starts screaming at me about how the sheriff's son isn't a public figure and how dare I do that story. And he sees, uh, he expected it in the Hawkeye, but then he saw it in the good old Mount Pleasant News. I'm like, we're both newspapers. Why would we not, why would we not cover news? I just really didn't understand that. And uh, when I said, well, you know, he's the son of the sheriff. Is that not a story? And, uh, why wouldn't we run the same story as the Hawkeye? We're a newspaper, and he just hung up on me. But, you know, it's easy to whine about the bad things. But there's been a lot of good things, too, in the newspaper business. You know, I've interviewed 
Barack Obama, John McCain, Joe Biden, Chuck Grassley, Tom Harkin, John Kerry, Mike Huckabee, and so many other politicians. And I've always liked politics. So, you know, that's pretty cool to get to talk to these people. The, you know, John Kerry was a presidential nominee eventually. When I talked to him, I didn't think he had a chance, but <laughs> he, he got it. And Mike Huckabee, you know, he's uh, run for president several times and he was a pretty nice guy for, you know, he came in there and I was at the Iowa Falls Time Citizen at the time and the radio station up there. And I'm like, sorry, this isn't really the Fox News studios, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get you interviewed. Uh, that's cool, you know, and there's been other famous people I've talked to. Uh, you know, I, I interviewed one of the guys from Leonard Skinner. I don't know who it was because they've had so many changes, you know, over the years. Uh, talked to Terry Clark, actors like uh, Heather Langenkamp played Nancy in the Nightmare on Elm Street. Sid Haig and Michael Berryman, you know, they're, they're big horror actors. One time I pissed Willie Nelson off by using a flash at one of his shows, staring me down. So that was fun. And uh, just a second, I'm going to... Uh, grab this kitty cat and I'm going to lock her out of this room because she is making too much noise for this video. All right, I'm back because that was just getting annoying and a lot of background noise. So I've covered a lot of crime and arrest and uh, sometimes the defendants have called me. One lady was screaming at me that I was ruining her life by doing stories about her uh, special crime and I think, no, uh, you kind of did that <laughs> by committing the crime. But uh, and some people have been upset about their house fire being in the paper and but what's interesting is I didn't hear from these people when the other thousand house fires have been in the paper. It just happened to be their house fire that was wrong to be in the paper. And there was a stretch a few months ago where I just getting calls and calls like this, a complaint a day about reporting the news. And I just said, I'm pretty damn sick of people calling down here complaining that the newspaper is covering the news. But I don't know. But my all-time favorite to hear from people is, well, you just ran that to sell newspapers. Well, do you think? If we don't sell newspapers, why are we here? I mean, that's why the newspaper exists, to sell newspapers. And uh, I guess my second favorite probably is getting threatened with a lawsuit. I don't know how many times I've had heard that one, at least a dozen. And uh, by the way, it's it's very difficult to prove a libel suit in court because the one thing you have to prove first off is that the story isn't true. And if you can do that, you have to prove that it was malicious towards you. And those are most of the time it's true <laughs> what we put in the paper. So, you know, if there's a fact slightly off here or there, maybe, but uh Newspapers strive to print the truth, so especially these small town papers that I work for. So it's very hard to get a libel lawsuit and get anywhere with it. And I can't even imagine how many stories I've written in the past 20 years, and I can't even put a number even close on how many people I've met and uh, just how many I've even forgotten that I've met throughout the years. It's just been amazing. It's an interesting job, but it, it is a tough job, and I don't think a lot of people really appreciate how hard the job is. And uh, Well, one last thing before we get too rambly here, me thinking about over this 20 years. You're going to find a typo or two in the paper, a lot like daily, you're going to find a typo or two in the paper. So, so many people have said they would come down and proofread for me, but... We proofread, we proofread the paper. People have no idea how many things we catch a day before getting the paper printed out. But you know, a few are bound to slip through. So just, you know, nobody's perfect and everybody makes mistakes. We try 
try our best and the way newspapers are going with no staff anymore it's just harder and harder we haven't had proofreaders haven't been a thing in these small town newspapers for 15 years so it's up to us to try to do our best and find everything and a lot of times they don't get found and get printed some are worse than others and uh, you can comment down below and ask me what some of my worst was and I'll try to answer you. But anyway, have a good one. Just thought I'd share that with everybody and, you know, subscribe to your local paper because once they're gone, they're gone.